One of the major objectives of this trip was to cut all the lumber I was going to need to assemble my garage. If I was an Alaska resident, I'd be able to get a permit to get the timber from the Forest Service for free. However, because I'm not, and because I was under a time crunch, I ended up buying my logs. It sure was nice to see them show up ready to go on a semi. One of the common themes of Alaska is nothing's easy. Getting an 8,000 pound log out of a logging truck is no exception. Fortunately, my neighbor volunteered his track hoe to help out with the process. Some of the logs were so heavy, they taxed the capacity of his track hoe. But with a little perseverance, we managed to get them all off. Next came something I hadn't seen before. Rather than pull an empty trailer back to your home base, it's very common practice in Alaska to load the trailer on top of the semi. Seeing a trailer dangle by a one inch cable over the top of a guy's livelihood made me a little nervous. I'm not sure how it made him feel. About the time we finished loading up the semi-trailer, my buddy's dad showed up with the bobcat I was going to need in order to move these heavy logs. Last time I drove a bobcat was about 30 years ago, so I'm sure oh, there will be a learning curve as I remember the basics. After a quick 45 second refresher course on how to run a bobcat, they headed off on their way. And pretty soon I was left alone to try and figure out how to get these logs measured, cut, and on the sawmill. I got to admit, it was a little daunting. got my logs all measured. Now the first challenge was getting them cut. I have zero confidence in my ability to cut through a big log with a 28 inch chainsaw and not hit the gravel underneath. Gravel's death on a chainsaw blade. I had to come up with a different way of being able to cut those logs. I decided to lift them with the bobcat, that way they'd be off the ground. As you can see, my bobcat skills are super rusty. Don't worry, as the weeks went on, I figured it out a little better. Up to this point, the biggest chainsaw I'd ever used was an 18-incher. I felt pretty proud of myself when I did that. However, that wasn't an option on these logs. I borrowed my buddy's much larger chainsaw and began the process of cutting through the logs. I got to admit, cutting through a 30-inch log in less than a minute was a lot of fun. I couldn't stop smiling from ear to ear. With one successful cut out of the way, 
I proceeded to make the rest of the cuts necessary to turn a 41-foot tree into manageable chunks. Now that I could actually lift the tree all the way off the ground, I had one last cut to make. What happened next became the bane of my existence as I cut up the rest of my logs. Cutting all the way through the tree without getting a blade pinched is not a skill that I've mastered. Fortunately, this one came out pretty easy. Some of the others were a lot more difficult. This next step for me is the scariest part of the whole saw milling process. Bringing a bobcat in close proximity to some light aluminum rails that are vital for cutting straight scares me to death. One false move and I could bend that aluminum rail into a banana. Given my awesome Bob's cat skills, I took this part really slow. Spoiler alert, I managed to get through the whole process without bending a rail, but every time I approached that rail with a bobcat, I was really nervous. This was actually the easiest roll and log of the whole process. Somehow I managed to capture the easy one on video. It was always a struggle to try and get it where it needed to be. Once you get the log roughly positioned, now you have to make it parallel to the tracks. This process on this log took me about 10 minutes. Sometimes it went really quickly, other times you struggled. Now that the bobcat was nowhere near the rails, I could lower it into cutting position. I didn't record the whole centering process, but you get the gist from this video. Measure, move, move it, measure it, measure it again, move it until it's parallel. Now that everything's centered and the saw's at the right height, you can actually begin cutting boards. I left this clip at normal speed, just so you get an idea how long it actually takes to cut through a board. This one was a 2x8. 2x8s seemed to max the saw out. However, that's what I needed for my garage, so that's what I was cutting. It was amazing how quickly it would go. 
the one watching it on video. It really is a slow process. Because trees are round and boards are square, there really is a lot of waste in this process. That would make great firewood later on, but it's a pain trying to manage it. This clip's been sped up a bit, but it shows the basic process. You make a vertical cut going one direction, get to the end, swing the blade into a horizontal position, and then make a horizontal cut coming back. By the time you've done a complete pass, you've got yourself a 2x8. We had a lot of problems getting the mill set up and getting it started, but I didn't show. But Four days into the trip, I actually had a pile of boards ready to go.